PSM에서 가장 잘한다고 생각하는 선수 타이러스 선수. 어, 타이러스 선수가 선수 생활 오래 하셨는데 어, 그 TSM 경기를 리플레이 해가지고 봤거든요. 어, 오래된 선수답지 않게 어, 엄청 뛰어나다고 생각. 14 League of Legends World Championship as I am joined here by Hong, who is the coach for Samsung White. 2-0 up already. What have been your impressions of your team's performance so far? 지금 삼성 화이트 팀이 2대0으로 이제 이기는데요. 화이트 팀의 경기력에 대해서 한번 평가해 주세요. 음. 일단 모든 북미 팀이 같은 건 아니지만 선호하는 운영 방식이 있기 때문에 거기에 맞춰서 TSM이 좋아하는 이제. 뱀피카 그 운영 방식에 맞춰서 완벽하게 전 준비했다고 생각하기 때문에 상경기도 걱정 없을 것 같습니다. So we've been analyzing NA team's play style, their picks, and even though they're not completely the same, uh, we studied TSM's play style a lot. And because we prepared so well, I think the remaining third game, I don't have to worry so much about it. All right, now you were with the team last year as a player, this year as a coach. What is their biggest change in their approach to the game, you would say, this year? 작년 롤드컵 때는 이제 선수로 출전하셨다가 네. 올해는 이제 코치로 나오셨는데요. 작년과 비해서 올해 가장 달라진 점이 무엇이 있을까요? 음, 아무래도 제가 선수일 때는 피지컬이 그렇게 좋은 선수는 아니기 때문에 <웃음> 해줄 수 있는 게 그렇게 많이 없었던 것 같지만 이번에 코치로 올수 있게 되어서 그때 못했던 것들을 말로 더 해줄 수 있기 때문에 이번 롤드컵 더 자신 있을 것 같습니다. Um, when I was a player, I couldn't really contribute to the team, but then now as a coach. I'm giving them a lot of advice and how about strategies and picks and bans. So I think I'm being a lot more help to the team at this point. Right. And finally, well, the team has been putting down a near perfect performance so far. If there's one thing you would like to see them do better, what would that be? 지금 삼성 화이트 팀이 이미 너무 잘해지고 있지만 딱한 가지 더 바라는 게 있다면 무엇이 있을까요? 지금 기세가 좋다고 너무 자기가 최고라는 그런 걸 가시나지 않고. 그냥 이번 롤드도 끝나기 전까지는 여기 오기 전 오기 전그 마음 절실함 잊지 않고 싸우지 않고 열심히 하는 팀이 되었으면 좋겠습니다. Uh, I hope my players don't get too excited about their performance and until the World Championship is over, I hope they don't put their guards down and keep playing their best. Oh, well, they're doing fantastically so far. Thank you very much and good luck in the next Thank matchup. You. And let's get right into that. Over to the desk. Thank you very much, Sharks. We're on to game three of Samsung White versus Team Solo Mid. Samsung White have taken that incredibly strong 2-0 lead. They are currently 8-0 at the World Championship this year, and they are one smash nexus away from advancing to the semifinals. It's hard to say what Samsung White could do better. There's very little that comes to mind. Monty, I immediately just want to talk about Looper. Pulled out the singed again. The cast has talked about his first professional game as Worlds last year, and he's back this year delivering. Let's talk about that singe. That was, uh, I feel that Samsung White is styling a bit in picks and bands right now. Just a little bit. Um, we call it a looper reel. Yeah, the looper reel. Uh, he did great on singe, but I mean, White picked a composition with zero wave clear last game and still got away with it like a bandit. So, little bit suspect. Uh, Looper's play has been great, but I would say his, his champion picks have not been altogether optimal. And Freak on the other side for Team Solo Mid, they seem to be scrambling. Amazing yeah. in particular has taken a lot of knocks this series. Yeah, he's not getting Lee Sin as his best champion by a lot. Um, what I did like to see was the fact that Wild Turtle and Co. could win the bottom lane when the Twitch came out. They could beat the weakest AD carry champion in lane and they could do that. To me, you've got to find a comp that sieges 20 minutes in and try to close the game. But the longer the game goes, the more chance Samsung White's million little outplays matter. In the Amazing's defense, so if you're outmatched as a team and individually in each lane, then the guy that's going to suffer the most from that is the jungler, because everybody will just flow over into that jungle and shut you down completely. I mean, you have to feel for Amazing, because he's going to get a lot of flack after this, and really, like, Mod is in his jungle constantly, Dandy's in his jungle constantly, and Pawn is ready to react like this. Looper is even teleporting into his jungle, so what can Amazing do? He can't even farm his camps. Well, too, too, too late top. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will find out as we hand it back over to Riv, Jat, and Deficient at the cost of this to get us back into the action. Thank you once again, gentlemen. And we are almost ready to jump into Champion Select here. Going off a bit of what Holmes said there, they prepped so much for these teams, and it's almost like they 
prepped so far into TSM's mind that they don't even have to worry about these invades. They're not even in a, like a dangerous position when they get into TSM's jungle in this early game. No, and that's really the scary part. Whenever TSM tries to do anything, Sam's about it. They're ready. I mean, they know, they know what's about to happen. They're, already one, they're always one step ahead every single yeah. time. And the biggest thing that White has to do is just keep their heads. They completely yep, right. dominated games one and two with very crisp and decisive early games. If the early game doesn't go exactly as planned, they need to make sure they still have that yeah. serious zone to go into if the game actually does get close. Because these first two, they've had such control after the first five to ten minutes that they've been able to loosen up a bit. And I just love the fact they keep banning this Orianna because Z has not Great worked. Ban. Zed has not been working for Bjergsen because he's not alone in one-on-one. -on -one. Like, there's a yeah. lot of members involved in this. And he's a playmaking champion where you have to get a lead to be useful in the game. Oriana's a lot more safe. That's why they keep banning him. And we actually were mentioning how in game one, we really didn't feel, or even game two, we didn't feel like TSM got outpicked. So there was actually no need for TSM to change up their ban. However, White is making it a point to play a different strategy in every single game. So even though Rise was available for their first pick to just go with the same thing, they pass on it yeah. to probably put Amazing on Jarvan again because they found that to be such an advantageous matchup or just because they want to deal with Dyrus' Rise. Well, I mean, it could definitely be because they want to see Amazing on Jarvan again. Jarvan is a champion. Once he goes in, He's not going Ooh. out, which means if he's engaging on you in a bad situation, you will kill him 10 out of 10 times. Jarvan is so hard to play perfectly on professional level. I wonder if TSM yeah. is going to, I was going to say, pull out the Nunu. Oh, the Nunu pick and try and do some like early dragon, get an early Baron maybe, two man the Baron with the Nunu, try something new, surprise Samson White a little bit. They have to. We said in the beginning, they need to go for broke. There's nothing to lose here. They have to put it all on the table here. Game three, Samsung White is up two to zero. And Luber hovers his main, that Mundo. We have not seen it yet and definitely no. caused a big impact here in game three. I mean, you could say TSM wants to try something new. They're just not willing to try something new new because it's got to be at yeah. least a little bit controlled. Uh, but seriously, the <laughs> more gotta pick, I'm actually very surprised by it. Yeah. it, it was not a regional pick for them, and I wonder if they're styling a little bit blind picking a Cassidy. Yep. It's almost like they're trying to bait Zed out of Bjergsen, almost. so he can't help other people. Or a talent pick, maybe from Bjergsen here. I mean, he has two great options now against this Cassidy in lane. Talon can really shut down Cassidy because you can silence him as well, so he can never even jump away, and you can just burst him down so hard. And we've seen this matchup before a few times. It's always in favor of the Talon. Unless, of course, there's five members from the other team. I mean, Pawn would know. He soloed Faker's Cassidy in the mid lane yep. very recently in relative terms if yeah. this Talon matchup ends up happening. And Samson White, again, the comps that keep building are very late game focused. Oh, we get a Yasuo yep. for Bjergsen here. But the comps from Samson White, again, is extremely late game focused. This one in particular is excessively so. But because they always win the early game anyway, they kind of hit this late game point instantly and it doesn't even matter. Team solo mid again should be stronger in this early to mid game. And stronger mentally as well. The crowd is behind them now. We heard Dandy saying it's going to be pressure that there's probably going to be more TSM fans in the crowd and they are behind TSM here for game three. It's a grim one. These have been sub 30 minute games. TSM has to turn things around here. Yeah, and this comp there against, they can definitely beat. Castle in Mundur, we never see them pick together, especially yeah. because you want to have Dr. Mundo against double AP comps. And then when you blind pick a Castle in, you kind of open up for physical damage dealer yeah. from the other mid laner. Seriously, it happened in game two. Where's the wave clear here from Samsung White? Are yeah. they going to be so much inside the jungle of TSM that they don't even consider wave clear or I mean, wave pushing from TSM yeah. a threat? That Bustana, once you get shift, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Everybody's kind That's of following suit with Dandy getting in the jungle, in the face of Amazing. We saw, as you were saying, Imp, they, we're about 15 CS behind. Let's take the bottom lane and roam and create so much pressure that they can't do anything. Could it happen again? Can TSM bring this one to the late game where they can really flourish? Don't forget to weigh in on the series over on Twitter. Send us hashtag SSWin or hashtag TSMWin to us at LOL Esports, and we'll be tallying your votes shortly. Game three to go underway here in the best of five. Is TSM's mental and physical prowess still up to the test? Well, 
if the first two games were any indicator, it definitely seems like TSM was not really prepared mentally to make it into these games. But obviously, they have to be able to reset. They have been playing many elimination games in best of five in the NLCS playoffs, and they were victorious every time. This, though, is one heck of an elimination game. But they have to be able to punish this comp from Samson White. Cassidy, one of the weakest mid laners early game, and Mundo, one of the weakest top laners. This is the time where TSM needs to play aggressive, punish Samson White for what they've been picking so far, get the lead. And in order to do so, it has to start now. Games one and two, Samsung White was able to take three of the four starting jungle yeah. buffs. CSM, just play it easy. Don't try to get three for yourself. Just secure your own. Step one. Get the necessary wards down. Get the solo lanes up a little bit as well. The pressure we saw from Dyrus in the playoffs, making Ackerman tilt, need that back. 1v1-ing his lane. Bjergsen being able to hold it very strong. All these things are falling to the wayside with the chaos that Samsung White can create in the early game. Will this be the one? TSM makes it out with all of their buffs. Amazing has been having a very hard time. The matchup has been in the mid lane, but they're making sure that it's hard for Amazing to even start the game. And look, everyone from Samsung White, they spot TSM and instantly run into the jungle here. Let's see what, we're yeah. gonna have a fight early this on. Is frustratingly efficient, but let's see how it works. A level one, 5v5, Dandy doesn't go down. He does pass this. Lust Boy picks up first blood. The knight's down as well, and Samsung White is running for more. the hills. TSM walks through a ward with five people at level one and still wins the fight two for zero. Hey, Jack, you what? were saying everybody has a skill at level one. Just use them. TSM took a hold Just of that go one. go yeah. in with confidence. First Lust time. Boy Flay, Thresh level one Flay is so damn threatening. And first it showed time, there. First time to actually take the fight instead of just disengage instantly and run right. away. They're, sti they're staying. Sam's right, okay, you want to duel us in level one. We'll take you, we'll kill you, take your red buff. We can get a three buff start now. All right, two things to look at here. Can TSM run with this? And the first I time mean, we have to see White adapt. Yeah, you see them instantly send the duel in up top side. So obviously it should be a three buff start here for TSM because now Amazing needs to go to his own blue buff. And the things we're going to have to track here is how the roaming impacts the lanes here. When will Wild Turtle be left alone to walk the Lust Boy roam? Where will Mata go to try and impact the rest of this game? There is a big vulnerability in the mid lane for Samsung White, and it will be about how they attempt to patch that up with this dandy Looper roam. Yeah, well, the Morgana is not exactly the best support pick for roaming in a lane swap. No, Thresh is the a lot better. Right here, yeah. as we saw, leave much to be desired. I mean, Lost Boy, if he's roaming around on Thresh, he can be part of a lot of kill series, a lot stronger in like these small skirmish fights. Also because he has the Lantern, he can easily get a second member in the fight. We talked about TSM with leads and holding them very well at 1,000 gold, even before three minutes in the game it was. We'll see how they react. Bjergsen's going to be getting big in that mid lane. Still looking at Wild Turtle and Lust Boy to come up with those kills and produce results later. Three lanes here for the farmers, and this has always proved very useful for Imp in this situation. Just arm up and get ready for the fights. And we can see Team Solo mid falling back to the game one tactic in the lane swap. Fast push the bottom lane, send down Amazing and Dyrus. If anyone from White shows up, that's where they have to dive them, force them away from this entire wave. And that's also why Lupa is saying, I'm not going to go bottom lane this time. There could be four yeah. members. Something that Samsung One is doing very well is they're making sure they have a lot of people in the bottom lane in case TSM decides to go for a dragon soon. And oh, here's that Morgana roll here. from Mort. Oh, Bjergsen very low! Oh! What a win! Blocks out the dark binding! Saves his own life. At the last possible second, he throws up that wind wall. And luckily, he was one of the few people who didn't burn flash in that level one engagement. So he still had that when the gank came. And they actually will draw first turret as well. Yeah, fast pushing down here. And because the action in mid lane was avoided, nobody died. Actually forced a flash ooh, as well. Ooh. They may have pulled off an ideal freeze right there. They killed they did, the turret they did, right they as did. the wave was coming. And they can actually freeze this now. Yeah, as long as the minions are grouped together, they will always attack the first minion coming from your wave. And that's what we saw here. It's going to freeze. Well, TSM absolutely, uh, absolutely 
able to grab this first objective. It's going to be Pawn back into the mid lane. No, he actually does not back. Looper comes out from spawn. This was not oh. a teleport here. What a great target for the Cleaver. Lost Boy was trying to ban yep. the dirt aggro. White dragon aggro. fight here. There's only four members from Samson White who can be around this dragon. Amazing is so low, though. Dandy knows it. Oh, oh he's dealing it. it. Dandy locked it down. They locked down Amazing as well. This is TSM let the lead go to waste here. No, they're able to pick up Looper. Pawn has fallen in this fight. Dandy is stuck in the no pit. He does not have a flash. That's a bug splat coming in from Wild Turtle. 3 0 and 2 coming up on six minutes. Man, if he didn't steal that dragon, that would have been a catastrophe for Samsung White. They had to take a big risk there. Deficio, you were absolutely right in saying they should not have fought there. And that's why three more kills to TSM almost makes the dragon steal irrelevant. Yeah, that was such a greedy play. Your AD carry sitting in top lane farming. There's no way for him to ever join. You have a Cassidy, by the way, one of the weakest early mid laners in small fights. And a Mundo is going to throw a rank 1 cleaver in your face, and then that's it. Why on earth are you running forward this fight? Again. I mean, he saw how low Amazing was, and he timed his W with his smite so, so well. But then after the fact, they still didn't have the manpower to fight. Dandy had used his most leveled spell to steal the dragon. Wild Turtle completely cleans up this fight. 3-0-2, early BF sword. Let's see if they punish. This is the best possible start we could oh, yeah. see for Team yeah. Solomon. They couldn't wish it's for more. They are so much stronger in going into the mid game as well compared yeah. to Samson White. Considering what happened in the first two games, this feels like a near miracle, but it's honestly because they were willing to take a few more risks. They saw the fight at level one, they committed for it, they saw a dragon, they committed for it, yes. they are being rewarded. They stayed at the dragon, they didn't care about Samson White moving in every other game, they've been running away instead saying we don't want to take the risk, this time they know it's all enough. What a hook, and that's a good hook. Him gets the black shield on him, but he's taking that trade very low in HP in mid lane. Well, getting a little bit of love out of this one, but they back off. Level six is there, so he's got to be careful for the ultimate. Amazing, trying to get himself in. Great uh -oh. deep wards, or actually defensive wards, I should say, Ooh. in their jungle. Through the turret onto Imp. That's the rocket jump. The flash coming in from Turtle. Summoner heal is out, and Imp is forced to flash as well. The SM is really putting their foot down here. I mean, let's see if they can get this blue buff control. They have the pink war, they have a recalling Imp. They are taking what their advantages allow them to, and they have white on the back foot here. Yeah, and also notice, Dandy is being shut down right now. TSM is running into his jungle, looking for fights, force him away from the buff so he won't be able to dictate the game like we've seen before. Let's see if they can keep it up. Dyrus flashing. It was the cast in Rome. He had to flash. Cast in Rome indeed. This is something. Off from the mid. It's actually something we see from Looper very frequently. He is so good at keeping top laners in a, at a point where they have no options other than put themselves in risk of dying. He will keep the lane frozen there as long as possible. Some people would say Dyrus was being greedy for farm there because he right. was in position. But no, if he's not there, he has nowhere to be. And at least he didn't have it cost him his life. I like the little trade here from Imp actually. What we see Tristana players do when they're against an AD carry who has no sustain is you use your ulti as poke. It's like Basically, a shot. You just use it in the start. You E the AD carry, then you ulti him instantly after, and you actually win the trade, yep. and he has no sustain to really get his HP back. See, Pawn definitely wanted to get some fight out. Blasting Wan first item instead of helping get out that catalyst for the rod. Very interesting. The wards being cleared out now by Lust Boy as they try to take control more of this top lane. The power is coming from that duo here. And something we have to mention here is TSM absolutely cannot let up. When you look at the low wave clear and the late game composition of Samsung White, this is almost an expected result for the early game. White was a little greedy and actually come out of this a little bit farther behind than they should, but only 2,000 gold against a comp like this oh! can't be bad. What a play! He gets the Big dodge play. though, but Dyrus is gonna be there, not even off the teleport, just hanging around in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, down his bottom lane, Lupa has been freezing the lane for a while, so Dyrus just said, okay, I have no flash, I'm gonna walk top lane, we have the lantern on flesh, I can join the fight instantly, nice setup, and of course, interrupting the jump midair. And when you're making the plays, you're the one with teleport up. We see now Looper's is down. The pressure from Dyrus can be made here. It is a minute and 40 on Dragon. It looks like Looper will have it back before then. 
Madiris is definitely doing for himself this game as well. A lot of indi individual decisions being made that come together as a team here. And right now, TSM, we're just going to see it again. This yeah. is the Lantern from Lost Boy, and he Great. times the jump. That is just beautiful. Nobody cares about this hook. It's I all mean, about <laughs> stop. It's all jump. that mattered. If he can stop the jump, he threw the hook out, Hook's actually, still him back. in case he missed the flay, because that's about where he was going to land. I'm going to give him that one. Because oh. he was able to get the kill anyway. <laughs> Timing for Flash as well. It's, it's so hard to play against Trist because if you interrupt in the first quarter second of the cast time of jump, you won't interrupt it. You actually have to get it once he's barely become airborne. And that's what Lost Boy was able to do with that play. And I love the play here from Wild Turtle and Lost Boy. They know the caster in mid lane isn't able to instantly wave clear. So because they've already taken bot tower, they've already taken top tower, you start going mid lane and you start pushing it down because you will always get damage on this tower. Kassadin won't be able to respond in time. There needs to be more members from Samsung White if they want to stop this push. And they are definitely turning the tables on White's head here. Six to one, ten and a half. TSM is prepping for this dragon. Yeah, and honestly for White, they have to give it up. Turtle mode. Yeah, White has to give up this dragon. They, they cannot fight for it. We say that, but based on the way that White contested the last one, I wonder if their mindsets changed to respecting TSM here because honestly, the play they made earlier in the game was not respecting TSM's team compositional strength. Yep. White thought they could do anything. They thought they had mentally destroyed TSM, but they had not at the time. However, they might still try. They are recalling down bottom to get five people in range. They don't have vision, though, and they're all they're recalling. They're doing the smart thing this time around. But is it too late? Because you have already fallen very, very far behind with a comp who needs to scale into late game. And we're not talking 20 minutes into the game or 25 minutes. We're talking 30, 35 plus before Mundo can tank enough damage, before Kassadin is strong enough, especially with the changes to his ulti. He needs even more mana now for the late game. He needs to be fully stacked. And we speak of Trist as the super late game champion, but typically when we see Trist taking over games, it's with the help of a Janna or an Orianna or a Lulu or a Nami right. or yeah. anything that can amplify Trist's auto attack. This is a Trist on an island right now who actually isn't helped very much, which means you have to wait until four to five items before it becomes the Trist everyone sees in their head. Exactly, and we often also see Trist with wave clear comps, so you can sit back, play defensive, and wait for the late game point. Samsung White won't be able to do that. It's gonna be all about him being the wave clear, which opens up for TSM to make plays. The first time we've been seeing Samsung White play from behind and TSM taking it to him and making sure they stay behind. 12 minutes into this, six to one. Two turrets in favor, or one for turret in favor of Team Solomit, I should say. But that gold lead is what they're really banking on. The items completed on their side. You see that Pawn is not afraid to still get a semi-engage in, get himself out safely. Samsung White is still trying to keep the pressure on. But they were wrong to disregard the mentality of Team Solomit coming into this game. And we said it in the pregame. What happens if Samsung White's three buff type of early game goes wrong and TSM is able to pull ahead? Will they be able to adjust and play it like they aren't so far ahead? The issue that White kind of ran into when they completely steamrolled the first two games is playing like they're invincible. But now it seems like they've calmed down and they're going to be looking to make some plays. Well, there we go. Oh, and the Dyrus, he does try to get himself out of this one. Just too much lockdown happening on that. Dandy picks himself up a kill as he starts getting inside TSM's jungle. And this is where Team Solomit needs to be able to punish him elsewhere on the map. When there's so many members on the top side and there's not even a tower to take for them, down his bottom lane, they need to be able to put on the pressure, take the tower, kill the Mundo maybe, who's still fairly squishy, but you don't really want to risk the dive, or at least take the mid tower. Ooh, they're sure. thinking some big thoughts right now with the positioning of Thresh and Jarvan. They think better of it, though. So they're just realizing the fact Samson White, when they're so far behind, are still running into the jungle of the enemy team. Cyrus didn't expect it at all. Yeah. He was just running down. He's like, they're clearly not here. We are pressuring bottom lane and mid lane. No way they're in my jungle. And suddenly Dan is just standing there, killing him. On a split pushing now, Samsung White not entering their red side of the jungle because it is completely dark. TSM with huge vision on the bottom side of the map allows them to have, have Bjergsen on the bot lane. And they just flow between the lanes, now taking down mid, three to one in turrets. And this is what TSM wanted when they picked Lucian. They need to be able to move him around from lane to lane, kill turrets with the aid of his passive, and just keep things going. However, the one thing that hasn't actually gone that well for TSM 
is this Dyrus game at the moment. Pretty low in CS, pretty low in levels, and not really the rise force that Looper was able to become in the first game. He's having yeah. fun with no magic resistance on Rise right now, and it looks like they're going to get Dandy up there for a little bit of the party here if Dyrus takes too many steps off that turret. There's always an advantage to take in League of Legends whenever one team commits resources in a certain place, and White is attacking the only point where TSM is not strong. What they can actually do, they're going to have to dive him because he's standing here freezing the lane. He doesn't have to do anything on the map at this point other than just farm. The lane's going to unfreeze though, and White saw this a oh, mile away. Already. He does a flash. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> now he has teleport. And he can just return to the top lane. I mean, Dyrus at this point just needs to try and farm and get back in the game. The other four members are so strong, they can make the plays. They can take down the towers. And Dyrus just sits and waits with teleport in case he's needed. Something that's happened is it actually seems like TSM's starting to lose control a little bit. They're going to have to make a play to oh, get him back. Oh, boy. boy. Finding the heat seeking hooks for himself this time. Take the lantern. Just do it. Oh, it's a teleport in, actually. Looper coming from the backside. Nobody takes the lantern. They are able to get Pawn out on that one. And blow is fat flash in the situation. A little bit more ground gained there by TSM. That was such a nice setup. Again, by Lost Boy. He's been looking yeah. pretty good on Thresh. It was open for... Martha in game one. Yeah. Took it. Game two, Lost Boy grabs it himself. Yeah. He's, First station. He's showing up in a big way right now. That bottom lane of TSM so heavily criticized in a lot of ways. 100% kill participation for Lost Boy. Nearly the same for Wild Turtle. They're putting the pressure on because White does not have a way of fighting back yet. Next Dragon in one minute. TSM needs to continue to control. They have the same ping boards from before. They've been there for the over five minutes, which means they don't have to go and buy new ones. They don't have to place more gold into it because they know, okay, we're going to keep them here. We're going to keep making sure Samson White is never going to get close to this dragon so they can clear the wards and they're just sitting ready for next time. Five hits on a pink ward gives them Ooh. enough time to catch up to Looper. Yeah. He blows his ultimate and this dragon is looking that much better for Team Solo Mid. Once that's burned, it's TSM's dragon. At this point, Samson White just says, all right, how much is TSM willing to commit to this? Because we're going to send everyone else to the lanes to try and keep farm up. Something that Pawn has been able to do on Cassidy in a difficult matchup against Yasuo, especially with multiple turrets falling down, is farm. 145 CS on Cassidy, 17 minutes in, in a losing game, is a hard thing to accomplish. Yeah, he's just been standing top lane for the last five, six minutes, just farming, farming, farming. Everyone else, actually from Samson White, managed to at least defend the tier two turrets in mid lane and bottom lane. Didn't go down yet. So right now, Team Solomit is actually buying Sam or giving Samson White a bit of time to get some much needed farm on the castle in. But this dragon will be theirs. Yeah. Then we need to start seeing them into the jungle, get down these two tier two turrets in mid and bottom lane, and just force this castle in to not sit and farm, but be part of this team fight. White definitely feeling the pressure. Pawn getting a needlessly large rod, feeling the elixir needs to be there as well for a little bit of bump in damage so they can make the impact they need in these fights. He'll be getting blue buff right now. See if they can act off of anything on this. That was our mid lane matchup coming out. Bjergsen here in game three. Keeping it strong for Team Solo mid. Up and those assists and CS. They're going for the bottom lane now. TSM putting their foot down and keeping control so far. As long as TSM realizes that White is completely paranoid with keeping that control in the top lane, they can take the rest of this map. Dyrus has played really safe considering the amount of right. board investment and time investment that White has put into shutting Dyrus down. TSM continues to take the small advantages they need to take because remember, Cassidy and Mundo Trist is yeah. locked. And because Santa White has no wave clear, Dandy's not even there with the team. He's topside, again, trying to get this Cassidy going. It's the only way for Santa White to get back into the game. They have to surrender these turrets because they have no wave clear. Absolutely, but maybe they'll try a flank attack right here. This is kind of their one chance. They finally have a flank. It's not the turret, and TSM is low. Looper's all back up. They're getting them split. Here comes Pawn. Dandy tries to jump in. They get Turtle. Pawn very low on this one, but Dandy's going to fly back into the fight here. Now they're going for Dyrus. Cut down by Imp. Now they're looking at Lost Boy, but have they figured out where Amazing is? It looks like he's got himself to safety. They also took down Looper. And it looks like Bjergsen will get himself out. So they save face on that. Turret and a two for one. Not the end of the world, but still a great collapse by Samsung White. They were able to get a few kills. They were able to get the shutdown 
onto Wild Turtle, and in the long run, it should benefit them a little bit. Not a game-changing play right. by any means. Yeah, so the big deal in this fight is how Team Torment actually split up after the take the tower. So Amazing and Bjergsen is fighting Lupa 2v1, which simply means the back line now is exposed. Yeah. And the flank coming around from Samson White, there's nobody to help either Wild Turtle or Dyrus in this back line, and they just end up dying for it. Pretty scary, that power squad of Imp, Dandy, and Mata coming strong every time. I can we see that same result. And let's just think of this series in a psychological perspective. What, if I, if I was Samsung White's coach right now, I would be really mad because Think of what happened in the first two games. Yeah. They had completely destroyed TSM. First off, going into the best of five, TSM did not believe they could beat White, right? In all the interviews and all they're talking to them, they're putting White way above everyone else. Like they're these immortal gods that they can't defeat. And it was true for the first two games. If TSM, because of this strong early game and the hideously poor early game comp Samsung White has picked, yeah. can give TSM the belief and factual knowledge that they can defeat Samsung White at least once in a best of five. If you can win one game, you can beat, you can win three games. Like just the mental boost it would be for TSM is ridiculous. And it didn't have to happen because TS because Samsung White had the psychological yeah. edge. They had the history of winning games, but they're giving it up in this game if they can't pull it out. And does that become a replay of the overconfidence? We've heard him quoted saying we were too overconfident and that's what got us in trouble. They seem to have done it once again yeah, for sure. They're getting into trouble. 100%. This is their own fault with the pick and ban phase and then it's full credit to Team Solomit mm -hmm. going into this game saying we don't want to be nervous anymore. We don't want to play passive. Now we want to just be as aggressive as possible and make the plays. Everybody trying to get into the Cataclysm. And Mata can't get out. Going down. Pawn throws himself into the front there. But they close in on it. The lockup. The knockdown. The they take the out the Pawn. The most expensive of the members, actually. The hook on him. The play as well. They forced a flash out of him. And he's down to about 310 HP. No longer participating in this fight. And they're only able to throw the business to get him out of here. What was Pawn doing at that point? They're all in the brush clearing a ward. And of course he's vulnerable to a knockup. There is a CC chain in the TSM team composition. He falls to 0-3. Four kills to the TSM. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see here. TSM jumping in. And now yeah. it's all about the fact that all the members are standing together. So he wants to go in, poke them. Notice a the flag and drag into Flash from Amazing right he here. Vision just to get the knockup. Boom. Flash, boom. Get the knockup. Jerkson joins in. You're dead, Kessler. Plus Boy actually misplayed his abilities a fair bit there. He used the box preemptively and also played the air. That may have been able to get another kill once he landed the hook on him. But TSM can be happy with that edge they were able to take right there. And TSM no longer trying to defend the turret in their top lane. They're finally past River. Dyra starts to take that into his own hands. They will join him towards this top side of Ward right on the outside. But this TSM is feels actually like the Baron. make or break point for TSM. The Dragon and the Baron are both objectives right here. And they go without sufficient vision control. Baron's getting low. I wonder if White can collapse. 2,000 L. Are they in position for a steal? The Wards are no, down. No, they do not steal. They go back on to Mod. Once again, a little too close with this Morgana pick. He goes down, and the crowd begins to cheer once again for Team Solo Mid. And with the Dragon coming up in 40 seconds, TSM can have their cake and eat it too. The danger of going for a Baron in 23 minutes if it doesn't work out is White would have taken the Dragon on the other side. That is no longer a threat, and they can do whatever they want, especially with the Mata. It kill. was White going for seconds and thirds, but Team Solo Mid has got their hand in the pie this time, and it looks like they will keep going. 11 to 4, 23 and a half minutes on this one, and the inhibitor turrets in the eyes of Team Solo Mid. And I love to see this team when they actually believe in themselves, and they actually want to make plays, and not just back away and let Samson White dictate the game. This Baron as well. They see Kathleen on the bottom side with no teleport, of course. Instantly, straight go Baron. We know we can take it down before Samson White can react. We get the Baron, get the kills. Things are looking great. And they're here. not even giving up side turrets to the split push right now. Still only one turret down from Samsung White. Things are kind of going from bad to worse. If they can sneak this dragon though, it would be a very, very valuable sneak. And I think they're gonna get it. The question is, will TSM catch it? And can they get out alive, yeah, because uh, yeah. They're gonna collapse. No, actually just pushing mid lane. They just want the inhibitor. They don't even care about the, about the dragon at this point. 
Honestly, considering how far down they are, that was a great play by Samsung White. But can they make it back in time for the second inhibitor to fit? Yeah, we when see the problem with no wave clear right now, guys. The inhibitors the wave, are falling. Previously, before the series, I had never seen a team that manages and manipulates the minion waves right. as well as Samsung White. Yet they threw caution to the wind in the last two pick and ban phases, and they are absolutely getting punished this game by TSN. Yeah, this game, you cannot control anything. When you're this far behind, that's it. The map is gone. It is, belongs to America. It belongs to Team Solo Mid at this point. And that's why no wave management for Samsung White, no wave clear. Try and get a dragon. It's the best you can do. TSM keeping the pedal to the metal now with a 10,000 gold lead on par to finish the game in time with what Samsung White has been bringing to the table. It's crazy. If this is a normal game and not the amount of pressure that is under right. all these teams right now, a 25-minute team that just picked up a Baron buff, has a 10,000 gold advantage, and has killed two inhibitors, it's a walk in the park Done deal. to close the game. They send all five members down to the bottom lane, they wait until super minions push in on multiple sides, or they wait until there's one or two people defending. They take the third inhibitor. If it tries to get defended, they win the game. That's what TSM knows. They're trying to just play this like a normal game and beat a Korean team for the first time in their history. <laughs> That's true. And not just the Korean team. Samsung, Samsung White. White. Samsung White, a favorite coming out of Korea. They're looking to be number one as second best has been on that plaque in their wall for so long. And they're trying to just put the number one plaque there. But TSM does not want that to happen. Everybody full mana bolstered up here for Team Solo Mid, ready to step on the toes of Samsung White once again and their final inhibitor turret. So White has actually managed the waves a little bit. TSM is only down here to force White to be in the mid lane. Imp spent a miraculous amount of time pushing the top lane, which may mean TSM can't go until their Baron buff is out because you can see there's only about 30 seconds left on it. So there's a little bit of a timer here if TSM wants to close this one cleanly. Be interested to see if that's also when White dives right in to surprise Team Solo Mid. They're watching the Baron circle yeah. and power, in power I should say, Team Solo Mid here. It's probably this wave. They should go in for the tower here. Imp is dealing with the minions. They're going for Looper. They got the big guy. Do they want Looper? Pawn down to about half HP. First rip is forced in defense. And it looks like they're not actually able to get Turtle in range for shots on the turret. Just Iris here. Still one for that oh, yeah. That's one they definitely want. They bring out the fly swatter and take down Dandy. Now they have the inhibitor turret, and it looks it. like they are going to be able to push on through. Imp's trying to focus on these waves that they actually aren't able to control now. Coming. Team Solo is looking to next his turrets. The top one's going to fall. This could be a hectic fight, the fight. but it's also going to be one in favor of Team Solo to start it off. They That's got it. Kill going gonna on the Manta. It's going to be game three in favor of Team Solo Mid. They keep themselves alive, not even needing an iron lung on this one. Just a few more shots, all very low. A cleanup crew is sitting on the rift right now if they can't take down Pawn or Imp. And that's the Nexus. We're going to game four. This is not over just yet. Team Solo Mid showing when they believe in themselves, when they make the plays, they can also win games against the Korean team. Anything is possible. And that's something Worlds has definitely taught us this year. After watching the first two games of this series, you would think there's no way TSM wins this game. Especially not in 27 minutes. Yeah. Obviously, some amazing things broke in TSM's way this game. Two kills at level one, but the most important thing of all is the belief and the backup that they can win. Picking that team, they had to have known that White is playing some games here, and they said, if you're gonna do that, we are gonna punish yeah. it. Don't expect White to do that no, again, no, no. though. They're not gonna pick a comp like this again. That was, I mean, they basically said, we can win early game with even one of the weakest early game comps possible to make. And they did. Like, you can have five yeah. Teemos, and it will be stronger early game than this comp they've just built. That's not enough. TSM will punish you, and they just did. It was a good job. It was a great job by TSM to punish in the way they did, especially after having the history and all the pressure and everyone telling them every single time they play a Korean team. TSM's never beaten a Korean team over and over and over again, and they finally overcome that barrier.
What a fantastic game. Everybody across the board playing well. Dyrus controlling the waves as necessary. He didn't seem like he was kind of just running about. Guys, where do I go? Individual decisions were definitely being yeah. made for him in this game. We do still see Samson White put a lot of focus on Dyrus in the top lane. Even when they were losing bot yep. lane, they were we losing mid lane. Dandy just walked straight up to top lane, try and kill him once again. So they want to keep him down, but as long as he's playing safe on that lane and let the remaining members, at least in a game like this, do their job, they can still win. So TSM takes one now on their weaker side to now yeah. be on blue. Even if Samsung White gets their picks, TSM now has the mentality momentum to go through this next game. Will that be enough along with the picks? Because we said picks weren't really what was causing these games to go to the wayside. That game a little bit because TSM took hold, but will it be the same thing when White goes back to regular champions? I completely agree, and honestly, the only way we're going to find that out is to watch the next game. <laughs> I am so ready. So for more insight into TSM's first win of the series, let's send it over to Quickshot and the gang at the analyst desk. Thank you very much, guys. Coming into that game, Team Solo Mid was 0 and 15, never to have taken a game off any Korean team, and they took down Samsung White. Uh, let's call out the obvious, you know, uh, uh, problems with Samsung White's composition. No wave clear, extreme scaling, but nobody can take anything away from Team Solo Mid's early game and aggressive play. They legitimately won that and abused Samsung White's weak team composition. Freak. Oh, absolutely. Now, the level one was a godsend for TSM. It was the sort of semi-miracle. We were thinking, this is something that TSM needs to win the game, and it happened 2-0, great start. But the rest of the game, was TSM playing very cleanly and objective folks with their lead. There were a couple of dives that they could have gone for that they didn't do, but they were on time for Dragons, on time for Barons, close it out well. And then Samsung White as well. If you showed me that game without names, I wouldn't have believed that was Samsung White. The over-aggression, the dragon fight at like seven minutes, mind-boggling that they went for that kind of stuff. Yeah, not only that, but just the they kept having knowledge of what was coming and walking into it anyway. But yeah, I agree. TSM played that out much more aggressively than I've really seen them play before. They pushed their advantage very, very well. Now, to talk about the early game just a little bit right there and go back to it, I mean, sure, they picked this big scaling composition, but if we actually look at how they wanted it to go, which is get the Morgana into the thresh lane, have the two, two on two and the one on one, and Mundo does quite well against Ryze in a one on one matchup. Now, because of what happened at level one, they were unable to do that, and that forced them in turn to lane swap. And then that's where the lack of wave clear really, really hurt them hard. But they saw they saw the invade coming. They went into it anyway. It was an incredibly disrespectful play from Samsung White. Now, let's get to the first replay. Pull that one up onto your screens. Double lift. We'll get to you after this one. Crepo, talk me through this dragon fight and uh, play that TSM did well despite losing the dragon. Yeah, just before we roll the clip, I just want to talk into the position that like Samsung got themselves in by agreeing to fight that level one fight. They were already behind. They felt like they were going to lose the control of the game. And yet they felt cocky enough to fight this dragon. The only way they could go right is if, if they steal the dragon and still get away. But they sacrificed three members for this. So it's like a lose-lose situation. If we roll the clip right here, we see why Dandy is often referred to by Monte Cristo and the likes as the Prince of Thieves because he jumps in, times a smite with his W. Amazing doesn't want to step into that either because he's so low. He gets dropped, but the cleanup from his TSM is there immediately and this just sets White so far behind early game and gets turtle rolling. And we really need him to break off of that map, get all those towers because as we said, there is no way for clear at all. He will just get rolling, get those kills, start sieging those turrets and they let Dyrus just be on his island alone in the back, cleaning the ways as calmly and as passively as he can. Well, even more baffling, too, is the lack of early shiv on him. I expect him to rush shiv after this happened yep. just for wave clear. Didn't do it. Double lift. You didn't believe in Bjergsen. You called it a 3-0. They are now 2-1. What's your take on this match? Uh, Bjergsen played really well. He managed to survive that three-man roam mid early game, which was really surprising. Last last second wall, he just he had a pretty solid game overall. I was actually just going to point out that Wild Turtle and Lust Boy have been up in CS against Imp and Mata all three games at 10 minutes, which is really significant. I think Imp is honestly not playing very well this whole series, and I'm just really surprised. I don't know. He's he's noted as the most dominant AD carry in the world, and yet he's losing lane constantly to Wild Turtle and Lust Boy. Freak, I have to give a high five to Lust Boy. His Thresh yeah. this game was fantastic. I think that's the best Thresh game he has ever played. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the rest of the match as we get to the mid and later stages. Sure. So yeah, the Thresh was very smart. TSM made the adaptation to prioritize Thresh over John of the Bandit game two, grabbed it in game three. Very smart choice. That adaptation is good. Uh, the rest of the game, I talked about at the very beginning, TSM are playing very smart with the lead, which is why I wanted to see them keep playing Lucian, keep playing Corky. Why I was like, def 
picked Twitch the first two games. That's kind of risky. TSM with the lead is kind of scary, and they're doing it. Dragons on time. They're manipulating the waves beforehand. They're not just sitting on Dragon on respawn. They're saying, wait, there's a mid lane wave. Let's clear that, then go Dragon. We've already got wards on it. They can't steal it. Don't worry. TSM are playing the things around the objectives well on top of that. If they can keep making this early game lead, Samsung White aren't showing the ability to play well from behind just yet. So another good first eight minutes, and TSM actually could win this series. I'm, I'm not sure if I would actually agree with that. But yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with that. But uh, it's nice to see that Amazing is still confident in his ability to make plays. And that leads us to the second replay we have ready. Uh, it's basically TSM camping in a brush up top, and Samsung White again having vision but biting more off more that they can shoot. So if we roll the clip immediately, Amazing is leading the charge right here and he wants to look for a pick. I think they know that Morgana's there, so he will jump over the wall, jukes the binding in that sense, and cuts them off for the Cataclysm. His team follows up, that's really good. They get the Morg, but what happens next is really why, what I like about the play here. Uh, again, Pong goes in a little aggressive, he wants to slow them down because he knows everything's on cooldown from TSM. This misses, but Flash. This is such a good ad ad adaptation from Amazing. He knows his standard's gonna miss, but he goes for the Flash combo, into the Yasuo ulti, and that, I like that from a jungle that has been suffering, that has been suffocated in his jungle by Samson White. He has the audacity and just the balls to make that play still and land it, and that bodes well for him into the next like, game. Yeah, that has to be a big uh, confidence boost for Amazing, who really struggled yep. in games one and two. Also, if I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know if TSM had that in them to play that way, even with a, a big compositional advantage. So my question to Monte Cristo, if Samsung White bounced back, is there a psychological, you know, worry on their side and boost on TSM to give TSM a chance in game number four? Or do you think this is 3-1? No, I think Samsung White knew exactly what they were doing in pick and ban. They intentionally cho chose... They chose pa Cast it in blind. They chose Cast it in blind. I mean, he is they're the styling right now. Yeah. That's what they've been doing. And yes, TSM played well, but Samsung White has been handicapping themselves in the last two games. I don't think we're going to see it again. And But that goes into the next point, which is... Samsung White, we just saw these videos. Oh, we were too cocky at Worlds last year. We're not going to do it. <laughs> hey, buddy, I've seen this team time and time again. I've been casting this team for many seasons, and they always revert back to this cocky play, even you know when they have a big advantage. And sometimes it really bites them in the ass. Yeah, haven't they gotten silver and bronze like four of the last five yeah. times in OGN? Yeah. They're really good, and then they never quite win. Yep. Except for once against Blaze, right? Like, well, and a lot of the time too. If we look at the, a lot of their matches against Blue, they have big advantages. Then they just kind of do random stuff. They don't keep themselves buckled down. They don't close properly. That's how they lose. They almost did that against EDG when Imp just randomly jumped in one v five on Tristana. So I really hope they <laughs> stop playing so arrogantly. So Krepo, we've heard a lot about the predictions and the overconfidence of Samsung White. Team Solo mid, a team that is, is quite emotional, that is quite riding on you know individual prowess and power. Is this overconfidence from White going to be enough of a boost? Everyone else has chimed in. I need your final thoughts. Well, I, I don't think it will be, but I would, what I think we'll see from TSM is here an early invade, an aggressive early game team comp. And, but I think White's smart enough to read that this time if TSM has the better early game composition, they'll invade. I think we'll finally see a game where we go two for two buffs in an equal setting, but then White's experience and just better macro like gameplay will just win them the fourth match. All right, I'm just about to throw to predict to uh, an ad break, but before I do that, I'm going to bounce down the line and just get your predictions for game number four. Tell me the team name of who you were going to win, starting with Freak. Samsung White. Samsung White. Monte White. Cristo. White. Double lift. CLG. No, White. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... They can't even win in North yeah, America. White. Come on. All going to be White. Be so wash. one game, <laughs> one game, but the analysts are still not convinced. Guys, when we return, we will see if TSM can build on that momentum against Samsung White in game four. They do not believe so. Don't go anywhere. The action in Busan continues after this. Gods can bleed, yo. <laughs> Pawn throws himself into the front there, but they close in on it. The lockup, the knockdown. 